Our first reading on the Passion Sunday comes from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things to come, he entered once for all through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not of this creation, nor again by virtue of blood of goats and calves, but by virtue of his own blood unto the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkled ashes of a heifer sanctify the unclean unto the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the Holy Spirit offered himself unblemished unto God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And this is why he is mediator of a new covenant, that whereas a death has taken place for redemption from the transgressions committed under the former covenant, they who have been called may receive eternal inheritance according to the promise in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us stand for the Holy Gospel according to St. John. <clears throat> At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of the Jews, Which of you can convict me of sin? If I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear is that you are not of God. The Jew, therefore, in answer said to him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and who judges. Amen, amen, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jew therefore said, Now we know thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, If anyone keep my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who is dead, and the prophets who are dead? Whom do you make yourself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you do not know him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be like you, a liar. But I know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jew therefore said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. They therefore took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. He is the eternal word of the Father's love for us. He has given himself through the womb of our blessed mother to us, that we may come to know the truth and live in the truth. And so, as sons and daughters of our blessed mother Mary, let us pray the angelic salutation that we might have the gift of the Holy Ghost descending upon our souls and that we may be refreshed by the Spirit of Christ and live in that truth of Christ. And so we pray together as sons and daughters of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. We have entered into an eternal moment, you and I. The word of God has come down, and that word of God is eternal, creative, and prophetic. And so it is that you and I enter into this word, allowing this world to be condemned by the word and told, you are not as important as my eternal life. Hence the church is not only a supernatural 
creation, but it is supernatural creation. It is supernatural in the sense that each and every one of us has a destiny. That destiny is to be with God, the angels and the saints, our blessed mother, for all eternity. That is our destiny, and that's what gives us our dignity. Now, in San Francisco, a very interesting experiment took place. Have you ever been to San Francisco? You see the rocks, and over those rocks walk these Dungeness crabs. And these Dungeness crabs, the scientists took and saw that there's a little hole right in the middle of their head. What's in that hole, these great scientists? Scientists discover things. And they found that inside the hole was a little pebble. Why is that pebble in the hole in this crab's head? So they decided, well, take these crabs and put a terrarium out that has no sand, only water. And we'll take that little pebble out of their head and see what happens. So they took the little pebble out of the head of about five crabs. They put them into this water, and the crabs just turned over and wiggled their little claws. They couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't do anything. So they take one out, and they put the pebble back into the hole. They put the crab back in, and he uprights himself, and he walks over every one of the other crabs. Oh, great discovery. That little hole right in the middle of the head with that little grain of sand is what is known as the pondus aeternus, the eternal balancing, that that crab needs this little pebble in order to balance his entire life to walk over and to live a decent crab-type life. Now, Satan knows that inside of each and every one of us, if he can take out the sense of the eternal, he has us. This is called naturalism. Naturalism is the motion of Satan to make everything this world-oriented. Everything. Politics, money. Now, it has been written, there are seven stages for Satan to destroy the Catholic Church and its eternal destiny of bringing our souls to heaven. What are they? First, I have said that the Catholic Church is the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Outside of the Catholic Church, there is no salvation because you must be part of Christ. That is why our Lord said to the Jews, you do not hold on to my word. Because you do not hold to my word, you shall die. You shall die because your father is not God, but rather the devil. The Jew was holding firm to naturalism, that there is nothing supernatural about Christ. There is nothing more than a human being. Get rid of him and everything will fold. Okay, so this is the first thing that has to happen. I must realize that the Catholic Church, the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ, was established by God the Father, who gave us the correct order for the salvation of our souls. The order is God, the Trinity, sending down the Son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, in order that he might establish the church, the mystical body, that whomsoever believes the word of God may enter into that mystical body and hence find the salvation in and through two aspects of the Son of God. First, that he is the eternal high priest, offering that sacrifice beyond bulls and calves and anything else. And second, he is the eternal king. Eternal priest, eternal king. Now, under the eternal priesthood, you have the pope, cardinals, priests, all of them offering the sacrifice that God established, not that man established. And then you have the kingdom. Christ is that who gives to every prince, every king, every queen, every president, the power to rule in order to allow the individual souls to find their way back to heaven. But they must be under the king of kings. Take that order away, and you begin to find everyone like a crab, floundering. What do we do? Now, this is the first stage. 
Satan said, I must attack the institution of the church. How do I do it? By making every vision of man a religion and saying they're all equal. They are not. There's only one religion. There's only one act of religion. There's only one sacrifice by which my soul is saved, and that blood of Christ is the blood that cleanses my soul. Second, the church, because it is formed as the mystical body of Christ, has an indirect power. The indirect power of the church is that it establishes for us the moral life. Moral, meaning criterion. How do I live my life? The criterion is right there. That's why it's at the center of the sacrifice. It is Christ crucified. God forbid that I should glory in anything save the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which I am crucified to this world, this naturalism. I'm crucified to this world and to all the things of the world, and I am living for Christ. So ultimately, we have this naturalism versus the supernatural. The indirect power of the church is to say, this is the way you must live your life. If I destroy the indirect power of the church, I set up a new system, a morality that's based upon what man thinks, and therefore divorce, as we see, because from the indirect power, we say we have to move to the family, and that Christ established the family in order that we might beget children for the kingdom of heaven. And this is why we now know Satan attacks the family by means of divorce. Divorce first. Contraception, second. Abortion, third. The destruction of the family, because now the family looks at things from a natural view rather than the supernatural view. We have taken out of our children the sense of eternity. You will save your soul if you follow the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and no other. So now we have the mystical body, the indirect power of the church, to lead us in morality, holy families that begin to understand that they are there in order to produce souls to heaven, to bring them to populate heaven. Then, from the family, we come to property, because every father, every mother should have property that allows that people, those families, to be independent. We see what Satan is doing megalomaniac that he is. He creates these mago corporations, farms. The little guy is kicked out. The little individual who's trying to ache out his existence is destroyed. Satan knows that if they have property, they have dignity, and they cannot be overrun by any other person. So property then moves to what? To money. The money was always there in order that we might be able to barter with one another and to receive the services of one another. What does Satan do? He uses money to become an idol. And hence, this idol, he can make and control individuals as slaves because from the big confines of a, of a CEO dictating to the little person way down here, it's an enslavement. You have to work on Sunday. We heard last time that in football, one of the commentators said it used to be the Catholics owned Sunday. Now we own it, almost like satanic. We own it. We have thousands, hundreds of thousands flocking to football fields and basketball courts, baseball teams. We have given up Sunday. We have lost, and so... Satan is at work, and Satan's plan is destroying the organization that God has placed there for our salvation. We must know the plan of God and then be able to attack Satan, and we'll see that. So from money, all of a sudden we then go to the divine trinity. The divine trinity that God has established for each and every one of us a union with himself through the sacrifice of his son, so that you and I may say we are temples of the Holy Spirit, that God the Father dwells within me, God the Son dwells within me, and God the Holy Spirit dwells within me. And therefore, I know my Redeemer lives within me. I know where my destiny is. 
to be one with him for all eternity. Which means that I must realize that I must be the hands, the nose, the ears, the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the poet says, I have no hands but your hands to do my work today. I have no feet but your feet to lead others in my way. I have no tongue but your tongues to tell men and women how I lived and died. And I have no help but your help to bring others to my side. We are living in a conflict, a divine, eternal conflict. The natural versus the supernatural. The church is supernational. It is to reign over every country, every place in this world. And without Christ as king, we see what is taking place. War is on the edge of our history right now. We know that the perfidious Jew, and I say perfidious because they have rejected the covenant that God established for them. For this reason, there is a new covenant. And that new covenant they must come into, as you and I came into it, through the blood of the Lamb. This Old Testament is done. It is perfected in the Lamb of God, and therefore the new covenant is a covenant of grace, friendship. Friendship with our Lord Jesus Christ. They did not want the friendship with our Lord Jesus Christ. They said, let his blood be upon us and our children. And hence they were condemned to wander the world and be rejected by the world. And now, what do we have? Anti-Semitism, a phony word. We are against the Zionist Jew. The Zionist Jew did what we said, and it is true. They killed our Lord, and they know it. That is why Caiaphas said, it is right for one to die for our nation rather than that the nation die. They know what they were doing. And so here we have our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to them and saying, look, if you but heard the word of God and kept it, you would be of God, but you do not keep it. Therefore, you will die in your sins. And then, what do they say? Ad hominem. They don't have any truth. They have an attack that is, oh, you are well, you are a Samaritan, and you have a demon. I have no demon. He didn't say, I am not a Samaritan. Why? I am a Samaritan. I am a watchman. I watch, unless the city be watched over by the guardian it will be taken. I am a watchman. I am a good shepherd. I do not deny that. I am a Samaritan. And it is right that he is a Samaritan. He needs to watch over our souls. And we ask him to guard our souls, to bring our souls to eternity. And we know that the conflict is within us. The poet says it. Within my earthly temple, there's a crowd. There's one of me that's humble, and one who is so awfully proud. There's one who is repentant for his sins, and another who unrepentant sits and grins. There's one who loves his neighbor as himself, and another who thinks of nothing save fame, fortune, and pelf. From much corroding care I would be free if once I could determine which is me. This is why we are given Lent and we enter into the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ because we have to do battle with the conflict within ourselves. And the conflict, our Lord asks us to pray and do penance. Now, it's very interesting that we come to prayer and we say, this is the lifting up of your heart and mind to God. It is not hard. Enter into it by simply turning to him and being his friend and speaking to him. The Our Father is great. The Hail Mary is great, but you also can speak to him as you speak to one another. Now, penance. Penance is a threefold, and we usually don't get it. Penance, number one, has to hit the senses. Two has to hit the heart, and three has to hit the intellect. The senses. If I'm going to take care of the senses, I must mortify my senses. I must control my eyes. I must control my tongue from going out and becoming the accuser of my brothers and sisters 
and criticism. I must control my ears from what I hear. Don Bosco said, three things lead a soul to hell so quickly. Bad words, bad books, bad companions. I mortify my senses in order that I might say, control my body, that it may not become simply a naturalism as the Jew, the perfidious Jew, and forget the sacrament that has given me the new covenant. Second, I must do something about my heart. My heart longs for the things of the world, is attracted to the things of the world. I must deny my heart and say what my heart really wants is the longing for eternal love with Christ. That's what it wants. It pounds and beats a death march to that moment in which I come to the point where God says, now you are prepared. Some are prepared early, like Dominic Savio, or the little girl Maria Goretti. These are, these are young saints that come to the realization that the supernatural is more important than anything else. Here we have kids in Syria standing up for their faith and being slaughtered, heads cut off. They have come to the realization that eternity is more important than anything in this world. And they've given their lives and testimony to us. And we should be prepared, too, to give our life and testimony to the Word of God living within us. So now, the senses mortification, the heart denial, self-denial, the intellect humiliation. I know I don't know everything. I know everything that has been given to me has been given to me by God. I should not use my mind to gripe, complain, criticize, cut down, or anything else. I must humble myself intellectually by saying that ultimately I am nothing. John of the Cross says, it's nada, nada, I'm nothing. God is everything. And whatever he gives to me, like Job, God gives and God takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. And we have this attitude of gratefulness for whatever he gives us. Then the well of eternal life like a spring begins to well up within us. And we know our Savior lives and that he's going to take care of my soul. So we are here on Passion Sunday to realize what has been spoken very clearly by our Lord. Abraham rejoiced at the fact that he saw my day. You're not 50 years old, the Jew said, the naturalist. I tell you, Abraham saw my day. Remember in Genesis, where Abraham saw three coming like angels, the Holy Trinity, and the speech of one saying, next year when I come, Sarah will have a child. Though she is 99 years old, she'll have a child. Sarah heard and laughed. And God said, you laughed. He said, I didn't laugh. And that was the name of the son, Isaac, laughter. But he was born. Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age, the child of promise. And God, Jesus said, before Abraham came to be, I am. If we were to translate into Hebrew, I am is Yahweh. I am who am, eternal presence. And that is why they took up stones. Their naturalist idea is kill, get rid of anyone that directs us to eternity. And it's the same today. That is why we call them Zionist Jews. They want this world, a global religion, a global politics, a global financial system, and crush everything and everyone who happens to be standing in their way. So this is the conflict. You are entering the conflict. In the passion, you must prepare yourself for the cross that God has given to you, wants you to use in order to save souls. And you must begin to realize, the, interpret the events of your life from the perspective of heaven. It won't matter. Like Don Bosco said, when the brothers came to him and said, oh, Father, these kids are just irritating us. He said, ah, save a soul. 
a little bit of heaven, and all this will be forgotten. All this will be forgotten. Imagine, I made it to heaven. I'm with God for all eternity. I kept his word. I loved him. And now the reward is mine. It'll be the greatest day that you ever could imagine. The greatest day. Keep that pondus eternus in your mind. I must get to heaven. I must save my soul. And if I can save as many souls as possible, I want to do it, no matter what the sacrifice is for me. If we do this, if we live this way and hold on to the word, the word will make you free. And if God makes you free, you are truly free. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.